Sure. So my name is Anne. Um, I'm a biomedical engineer by background. I was trained um, both in France at Ecole Polytechnique and in the United States, um, where I did my master's degree at Johns Hopkins University. Um, and subsequently worked um, for about 10 years in medtech startups in the field of um, surgery and endoscopy, so somewhat familiar with um, the field we're in today. Um, and then joined an entity called MD Start, uh, which is um, today one of the Sophie Nova Partner strategies. It's a, it's a medtech seed fund and accelerator, um, and have been running MD Start since then, uh, which was about seven, eight years ago. Um, and Moon Surgical is one of our portfolio projects. Uh, it's part of our model that um, we are the founding CEOs of our portfolio companies, uh, which I did for Moon. Um, and the very you know, specific thing around Moon is, you know, I'm still the CEO of the company uh, because um, it's been doing well and I feel I can contribute. So, you know, so far, so good and I'm around. Moon Surgical um, was founded uh, in 2019 um, by um, um, a laparoscopy surgeon by, called Professor Brice Gaillet. He's very um, famous in Europe as one of the you know, really fathers of laparoscopy. Um, he is in his 70s today. Uh, and he had been working for about 15 years with a lab um, in academia based in Paris around um, this concept of a co-manipulation platform uh, for soft tissue surgery. Um, they took the technology to a point where it was mature uh, for tech transfer. Uh, and Professor Gaillet then teamed up uh, with um, a young uh, entrepreneur uh, by the name of Pierre Combredon in order to execute that tech transfer. And then they started looking for funding um, and operations support. That's when, you know, we met them with MD Start um, and decided to invest. And then I shortly after took over the management of the company. The Maestro platform is a collaborative robot um, designed for soft tissue surgery which really keeps the surgeon at the center of the OR um, next to the operating table and equips the surgeon or augments the surgeon with the ability to control um, two additional surgical instruments. Um, so typically um, these instruments would be um, the scope uh, and the retractor, at least in our initial use case. Uh, so functions that would be, um, you know, taken by a, a human assistant uh, as of today. Uh, and so we're providing the surgeon with an ability to um, you know, entirely control what's going on uh, with all the instruments that are being used um, and confidently uh, you know, position them. Um, we also have ways to automate uh, their positioning um, to really facilitate the surgeon's life, provide um, perfectly stable vision, um, as you know, surgeons typically like in robotics, uh, provide full control, um, and um, really streamline the procedures uh, while reducing the need um, in terms of workforce in the OR. Maestro um, can be used for um, any soft tissue, minimally invasive surgery. We're solving some very systematic needs and issues in these procedures, right? We're holding the scope, we're exposing tissue. Um, you will need that in any uh, of the soft tissue, um, minimally invasive surgery procedures. That being said, we are initially focusing on um, abdominal surgery and, and more specifically general surgery and bariatric surgery. Uh, so non um, cancerous indications, right? We are focusing on removing gallbladders, repairing hernias, uh, removing um, appendices, uh, doing bariatric surgery, gastric sleeve, gastric bypass, uh, reflux surgery as well. Uh, so these would be um, our initial focus indications. see um, the surgical robotics landscape in soft tissue surgery um, is one where you know you have um, 
more sophisticated platforms than us, you know, platforms that um, have um, a heavier footprint, um, that are um, more disruptive in terms of the surgical workflow. They also provide additional capabilities, such as, you know, the wristed uh, uh, capability, of course. Um, that being said, we don't believe there's a future where um, these more sophisticated platforms can equip um, any um, operating room where laparoscopy is performed. Um, and we don't believe that, uh, you know, most laparoscopy procedures, um, you know, require those capabilities. In all the indications and procedures that I cited, uh, you don't need suturing, right? So we, you can you can perfectly function with with something lighter um, than than what um, exists today on the market. Uh, so our purpose has really been to deliver um, those. Um, you know, basic robotics functionalities, you know, the stable vision, the full control um, to, to augment some of them, you know, by automating the, the scope movement, uh, for instance, and deliver them in a way and in a form factor that, um, that makes it uh, accessible um, to the masses, if you will. Uh, and so we think our platform can really become an essential tool of any OR where laparoscopy is performed uh, because it's modular, it's adaptable, uh, and it can be used by any surgeon in any room for any, any surgery, um, you know, uh, or let's say for the vast majority of, um, of laparoscopy surgeries. So despite these limitations, you know, I think it's very, um, you know, fair to realize that surgeons have come to love things about surgical robots, right? They love the stable vision, they love the fact that they're in control, they love the fact that it's comfortable, uh, that the ergonomics are good. Um, uh, but 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 there are still pains, right? I mean, the fact that it slows down the OR, that it impacts the workflow, the communication, that they're extremely costly to implement, etc. So what we've tried to do is really to deliver those benefits um, in a way, a form factor, an embodiment that is a lot more adaptable, accessible, modular, um, that can be placed in any OR and used for any um, type of surgery. Uh, and so it's, it's been our obsession in, in the design phase to maintain that simplicity uh, and to make sure that the system seamlessly integrates uh, into the OR um, and can be very easily um, learned um, by surgeons and their staff. The Maestro system is unique um, first through um, its core technology, right? We are using arms that are um, designed and used um, historically as haptics input devices, right? So they are very sensitive and sophisticated force sensors, uh, which we have turned into arms that hold surgical instruments. So what it means is the arms can understand when the surgeon is holding um, or grasping the instrument that is held by the arm. Uh, they can understand when the surgeon is moving um, that instrument. Uh, and, and when that happens, um, the arms will 100% um, compensate for gravity and any friction, right? So um, they will become fully transparent mechanically and allow the surgeon to move the instruments without any resistance. On the flip side, when, when we understand or when the arms understand that there is no force um, put on the instruments because the surgeon let go, uh, they will instantaneously lock um, into the desired position and provide stability for that instrument. Uh, so this, you know, intrinsically is very different from the way um, robotic arms are made uh, traditionally, right? Um, they're not back drivable, they're stiff. Um, so, you know, the technology, the core technology that we use is, is extremely different. And of course, uh, it's powered and augmented by all the software functionalities we've um, developed uh, around that. Um, another big difference is the way we are approaching um, the market, uh, which is very much related to the market segments we're going after. Um, so high volume ambulatory settings. Um, and we believe that, um, you know, there is a shortage of staff in these places. There's a shortage of capital uh, as well to purchase large pieces of equipment. Um, therefore, we are um, going in with um, a subscription model that is um, 
um, basically a monthly fee tied to um, usage volume. Uh, because as we want to simplify the usage of our system, um, we also wanted to simplify the procurement uh, experience and to lift, um, you know, barriers to um, access the technology as, as much as we could. So we just raised a new round of funding, which came um, earlier than expected. Uh, we had strong interest um, from investors and, you know, in the current environment, we decided um, it was um, safe to take the money when people are ready to give it to you. Uh, and, and the purpose of really bringing in more money is twofold. Um, the first one is to um, develop um, our manufacturing capability. Uh, we want to be um, in a position to scale. Um, and the second piece is um, executing our commercial launch, um, you know, identifying the sites we will be working with for the limited market release uh, over the next um, 18 months, uh, and then uh, preparing for a broader launch um, early 2025. Five.